Oh, fancy meeting you here at the Daily Space Weather. Let's get into it. Here's the sun for the past 48 hours. In the house favorite wavelength, 171 angstroms. We've got a major uptick in the solar wind density. It's the leading edge of coronal hole high speed stream. We'll get to it and lots more on our YouTube exclusive space weather video. So looking at the magnetosphere for the past four hours, we'll see an uptick in pressure here. That's because the solar wind density has come all the way up to 40 protons per cubic centimeter. We'll show you the real time data here momentarily. Again, this is the last four hours. It's magnetohydrodynamic pressure nanopascals. Earth's magnetic moment from space, our geospace magnetosphere movie. We'll also look at the magnetic situation from the ground level. There is Earth's magnetic moment. From the ground, this model is nanotesla. Ground magnetic perturbations, geospace delta B. Again, there should be a mild uptick here in the magnetic flux density. And let's get to some additional data here. That was pretty uneventful. There's the KP index, it's at two. Geomagnetic calm conditions. We can expect some geomagnetic unrest early in the morning tomorrow and early in the morning on Sunday, apparently, according to NOAA's forecast, at least. And here you can see this major uptick in the solar wind density. Solar wind density went all the way from about 14 protons per cubic centimeter to about 40. So that's the current state of affairs. About 42 protons per cubic centimeter. And we can expect to see this drop off and the solar wind speed come up to like 650 kilometers per second. That's my guess. It's the leading edge, the density wave of a high speed coronal hole wind stream. We'll be monitoring it. We also see a divergence here in the GOES magnetometers. You can see lower readings coming from the GOES 17 and higher readings coming from the GOES 16. So that would be only 62.3 nanotesla from the GOES 17, 99.1 nanotesla from the GOES 16. Keep in mind they are at different locations in their geosynchronous near equatorial orbits. Next we'll look at the heliospheric current sheet. Give that a minute. And Earth is still in a South Pole current sheet. It looked like there was a North Pole current sheet headed this way, but maybe not. Maybe we're expecting it. I think the best choice here is we're expecting to see some sunspots to show up in the Northern Hemisphere. That's my best guess. I'm sticking to it. We've got some pretty basic sunspots in the Southeast. I don't know what's going on with our Gong 2 data here. There we go. So we've got some sunspots down here. They're looking pretty magnetically simple. So maybe some new activity about to rise or form in the northeast. We'll keep an eye on it. And when I say eye on, pardon the pun. Next, looking at coronal holes and the density wave that we're seeing, the high, the high density solar wind that we're seeing is a result of this huge South Pole oriented coronal hole here rotating toward the western limb. It's quite well defined, it's very, very large. And 193 angstroms is a great wavelength through which to view it from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. There you have it. Let's move to sunspots. We've got a lot less. Also, the radio flux has dropped down to 123 solar flux units. There is still a high likelihood of seeing a major flare from this area. So sunspot 3017 is not fully set yet. We could even see a flare from 3014, even though it's, it is largely out of view. I think the Umbrae are completely out of view. But our regular viewers are probably well aware that we regularly see flares after sunspots set or just as they set. There you can see 3017 making its way 
around the northwestern limb. These sunspots 3023 and 3024, they are simple. They're, those are just alpha class sunspots there, folks. What is interesting about them is the difference in their latitude. You can see how far apart they are from a north-south perspective, and that is indeed interesting. One of the many interesting features of Solar Cycle 25, it has not been boring, and we're still over two years from Solar Max. If you view us on Twitch, there's a great mobile app. It'll actually alert you when we go live. Thanks to our members of the Smash team. By the way, if you're sick of not seeing all of our videos in your feed, head to smashomash.com slash smash team and click posts. This is what you'll see. There's yesterday's offings. BitChute meteorology exclusive. There's our YouTube exclusive. And then two Twitch exclusives. Those are yesterday's live streams there at the bottom. View today's Twitch video about the earthquake swarm. Also, if you're looking for your thing, make sure you enter the promo code your thing throughout the weekend to save 20 to 60% site wide on everything. So if you see your thing here, and each one comes in a variety of different products, Pick some up. Don't forget to enter the promo code your thing to save 20 to 60% site wide on checkout. I would say to each of you, Universum Liberate. You can find links at smashamash.com and below this video. There's the link to the Smash O merch. There's the link to the Smash team and welcome to the neo-renaissance. We are still in the process of writing a paper. Gold Smash Team members will see it as it gets written at smashamash.com slash smash team. Let's do a cosmic ray update as we see some interesting phenomenon happening here. So here's the apatity neutron monitor. And this is pretty interesting. We saw a major dip and now an increase back to the baseline levels. So that's pretty interesting, folks. And over the last 30 days, it's almost flat in terms of cosmic ray flux at apatity. All of our major monitors are showing that same dip and then increase. Levels nearly flat there at Barentsburg also. Going farther south to Athens, Greece, same thing. You see this huge dip and then an increase in the past four or five days. A slight downtick over the past 30 days there at Athens, Greece but mostly flat. Going even farther south to Mexico City, you can see a similar dip there and an uptick over the past 30 days at Mexico City. Slightly higher levels now than 30 days ago. And let's go back north to Oulu, Finland. So there's Oulu, Finland's neutron monitor. Similar graph there. A tiny downtick over the past 30 days at Oulu. Let's go as far south as we can get. There's DOMB Antarctica. Slight downtick at DOMB. DOMC, similar slight downtick. So that's some legit data there, an interesting phenomenon. And let's move on. Proton flux is flatlined. No relativistic particles showing up any time recently. And the flare profile, the X-ray profile, has dropped down. So the general background output of X-rays has certainly come down here over the past three days. Check out the seven-day chart. You can see a bit of a downtick there at the background level. And, uh, yeah, just some C-class intensifications here over the past day. Again, don't be surprised to see M or even X-class flares. I have a feeling Sunspot 3017 and 3014 and the rest of the area around the western limb are not yet done. So this is one of our better wavelengths, 131 angstroms, to view x-rays or to, to view solar flares I should say. This is not the x-ray spectrum, this is the ultraviolet spectrum. Extreme ultraviolet light in 131 angstroms which is the spectral output of ionized iron, one of the many species covered by the SDO. Keep an eye on the upper right as it's 
been largely underperforming. Sunspot 3014 and 3017, that is. Next, a star chart. We've got we've got Jupiter and Mars overlapping here, very close together near the ecliptic there. If you're up before dawn, you may see this spectacular scene. Mercury rising ahead of the sun as, as we speak here in Pennsylvania. We're located in Lehigh Valley, by the way. Looks like it's showing me old data there. Let's move on. I changed my mind. It is 547 when we recorded this video. So here is uh, the approaching new moon as all the planets gather on one side of the solar system. Let's advance this one week. Keep in mind, this is not to scale. These things are very, very far apart from each other in reality. Let's move it ahead. Three days from the new moon. There's where things will be on June 3rd, 2022. And let's take a look at some coronagraphs here. The Soho Lasco C3 and the Stereo A coronagraph. Showing us no earthly directed coronal mass ejections at the moment. So there's Stereo A coronagraph on the right for you new viewers. Thanks for tuning in. Earth would be off in this orientation from Stereo A's perspective. It would be behind you from the Soho Lasco C3's perspective. Again, they're located at Lagrange 1. That's the Soho Lasco C3, the blue imagery on the right, and Stereo A at Lagrange 5. The red coronagraph uh, Stereo A's Core 2 Space Weather Beacon. So that's about where we'll close things out. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Space Weather at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. And may that solar wind be at your back.